If you're a comic book fan, you will love this film. If you're a film fan who appreciates film and you don't care for comic book Easter eggs, you don't care for cameos, and you're not really that into comic books, this film is garbage. Let, let's, if you are a hardcore comic book fan, if you are a hardcore comic book fan, watch this film now. Watch it, watch it yesterday, watch it two years ago. Watch it in your, just watch it through osmosis. If you are just a hardcore comic book fan, I 1000% recommend this. But again, you have to be up, be very clear with what I'm saying. It's like if you're a hardcore comic, comic book fan, boom, watch this, hundred percent. This, your head will be blown. If you are just a guy who loves comic books, you're not really a big film fan. You're not that much of a of a movie fan, but you're a hardcore, passionate comic book fan. This film is a dream. You will adore this film. If you're a film fan like myself, if you're a film fan like myself. This film is useless. It's a pointless film. So, be, be, so I've got be, I want to just start this up because I think it's very important to start this here. That if you appreciate story, plot, character, proper film structure, if you appreciate the film nature of like a Godfather, an Amadeus, a Seven, a Shawshank Redemption, a Midnight Cowboy, you know, a you know all those kinds of films where it's like, okay, these are where you are really focused on structure of, of how to actually produce and make a film do the right thing. This film is it's 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 not a film. This is not a film. This is a theme park ride. This is a fanboy creation. I can't call this a film. I can't call this a film. So from the jump, you have to really understand what this is. And I think when you understand what this is, then you decide whether you like it or not like it. I love comic books. I'm not a comic book fanboy. I'm not a hardcore comic book guy. But bro, I grew up when both of my older brothers were, they, they made comics because they were like artists. And I'm just like a sideshow artist at five, six years old, doing like my, my little drawings. And I still do little drawings. And I read comic books. I have a whole host of graphic novels, Arkham Asylum, um, Ronin by Frank Miller, um, 100 Bullets. Also, I love art. I, I draw in my pastime. I love comic book art. I have about 40, 60 issues of Spawn single issues because I'm such a huge fan of Greg Capullo's drawing. So yeah, but I'm a bigger film fan. So if I, I am a much bigger fan of films and movies than I am of comic books. I appreciate comic books and I like it as a side thing. Films, that's my, my passion. Bro, I was on the path of being an actor. <laughs> so I take films a lot more seriously than I do comic books. So as a film guy who almost got into the industry for film, who almost became a full-time actor, I look at this more critically. And as a film, this is useless. This is, this is a, this is a... You see, I can't call this garbage, but in a sense, it is garbage. In a certain sense, in this case, garbage. But again, if you're a film fan, you will love this. So I just want to start that. If, so if you're a comic book fan, you would love this. I am recommending this to comic book fans. If you're not that bothered about films and you don't really appreciate structure, story, beginning, middle, end of how you should actually structure a film with proper characters, a villain, protagonist, antagonist, and just how a film structure goes. If you don't appreciate that, but you just want to just enjoy yourself, be happy, laugh, and you're into comic book stuff, oh, this film is a, it's a 10 out of 10. So it depends what you're looking for. Um, so I'll get back to my thoughts afterwards, man. So, see, here's the thing here. Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool. He's Deadpool. Um, when you just look at his cadence, how he speaks, how he talks, the guy, if you've read the comic and everything, played the video games, he is Deadpool. But the issue is... I don't want to see a Ryan Reynolds movie. I want to see a Deadpool movie. I was given that in, in the in the first film. In the first film, that's what I was I, I was given, which is why, you know, 
This is still the best Deadpool film, 100%. And I think if anyone has seen all three films, they will agree this is the best Deadpool film because Tim Miller, who was the director, he understood how to rein Ryan Reynolds in. So, of course, Ryan Reynolds had a lot of say because he was the big star. But remember, this was off the back of um, Green Lantern. And Ryan Reynolds was, was laying brick after brick after brick. So this was, he knew that a lot was riding on this. So he knew that, okay, look, I'm still in the movie doghouse. I've got to be reined in. And when you look at Deadpool 1, it was the perfect balance of Ryan Reynolds with a bit of improv, but also direction and focusing on the, on the character. Because the, the thing here is this, comedy is subjective. Bro, Cable Guy, I believe, is the funniest film of all time. They let many people view Cable Guy as a creepy, weird film. I think it is the funniest film of, of all time. Of all time. But that's but it's subjective. So I know there are people who find Ryan Reynolds funny, and that's all cool. I don't find him funny. I don't think his comedy is good. I've known this guy since two guys, a girl, and a pizza place, when he was actually skinny thin. So I've known him for a long time. And I appreciate his comedy, I just don't find it funny. And that's just so, so subjective. So the issue you have is, once you now give him free reign just to do whatever he wants, and in this movie, Ryan Reynolds is just let's loose to do whatever he wants. In my opinion, you see, if you find Ryan Reynolds funny, oh my gosh, it's a right, you will love this. But if you're like me, who doesn't find Ryan Reynolds funny? At times we're like, okay, all right, bro, what are we doing here, bro? <laughs> Because I'm sorry, I didn't come in to see Ryan Reynolds. I came in to see Deadpool. So in the first film, that was Deadpool. And Ryan Reynolds was playing a character. Because what you have to understand is, Ryan Reynolds is a great, is a very, very good comedic performer. That's what I will never deny him that. As a comedic performer in terms of how he delivers comedy, he's good. Because there are guys where it is a skill to deliver comedy in his particular way, this taking from an actor right now, he's a very good comedy performer. He's not a writer. There are guys who are great comedy writers and guys who are great comedy performers. Go watch the credits after a Dave Chappelle comedy show, an Eddie Murphy show, or a Richard Pryor show. You will see that they have other writers. So they need help from other writers to help them come up with those good, cool lines. So the issue here is, I think in this movie, it's Ryan Reynolds, OPT. And for me, I'm like, okay, this is too much. This is too much for me. So that was an issue that I had there. So let's talk about it. <sighs> Before I get to what you know, I'm going to get to, Hugh Jackman is a very, 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 very good actor. He's a very good actor. And I think in this film, you, in this film, there are scenes where like, oh yeah, this guy's actually a damn good actor. Because when you watch Prestige, Bill was good in Prestige. That was Hugh Jackman's film. When you look at Prisoners with the Jake Gyllenhaal, damn good film. He is a very, very good actor. So I'm not taking anything away from him. And even in this film, there are scenes where it's like, this guy's a good actor. <laughs> this guy's a really good actor. Like you can see that Ryan Reynolds was bringing in the comedy Hugh Jackman was bringing in more of the drama and really the waiting. And, he, and I think he helped us to ground the film in some drama and, and some realness. So, again, his performance in this, as we all know, quality is as good. So, he was, his acting was quality. His acting was quality. Here's the thing. And you know where I'm going to go with this. Okay, no, no, no. Before I even go go there. So this goes back to the film. I love the cartoon, bro. We, you know how much I love the cartoon? I love it. I, ask my cousin, I love it. Boom. I, I, I never asked for Wolverine to be in a yellow costume. Fine. Comic book fans will go crazy and amazing. And again, I don't. this is a non-spoiler review. There is a moment in this that will make comic book fans literally erupt. Your head, if you're a comic book fan, especially of Wolverine, there is something that happens in this film where your brain will explode. And when I was like, <laughs> they really did that? They really did that? Wow. So if you're a comic book fan of the comic book, of the cartoons, there is this, and we, you know what it will be. There's a sequence that happens where you're like, what? 
Real cool. I didn't ask for this. For me, for me as a huge Wolverine fan, as a massive fan of the cartoon show, I don't want him in a yellow costume. Case in point, when Tim Burton made that Batman film, he's not putting a dude in freaking gray pajamas and a light blue cape, no. It's a film. It is a film based off of a comic book. It's not, let's take the comic book and put it into a film because some things in film don't translate from the comic book. A guy with, a, with gray pajamas and a light blue cape does not translate into a film like in Batman. A guy in bright yellow, bright yellow, bright yellow spandex does not translate onto a film. It does not. Okay, when you're making a Wolverine into a film, lumber jackets, jeans, cigar, um, Timberland boots, that's Wolverine. That's who he is. Okay, and if you're making like the X-Men thing, you find a uniform that works well for 2024. Okay, now, if you're doing a film based in the 90s or 80s, okay, fine, it's different. But if you're basically a film based in 2000, in 2010, 2024, bright yellow spandex, no. But again, this is not a film. This isn't a film. It is just an ode to the fanboys. And you know where I was going to go with this, guys. I'm sorry. He's too tall. He's too tall. And watching this, this film again, I was like, no, he's too tall. Because there is a sequence. Again, I don't want to spoil anything, but there's an action sequence where I was like, Bro, this guy's too tall. <laughs> this guy's too tall. Like, there's, there's a particular feeling you get when Wolverine fights. And that, particularly, that, that particular feeling you get when Wolverine fights is based on off of his size. When you fight a short, tenacious person, it's different from when you fight a tall person. Why does Mike Tyson look a particular, a particular way when he fights? Why does Joe Frazier look a particular way when they fight because they're short. And because they're short and stocky, there's a particular feeling you get from them when they fight as opposed to a Lennox Lewis or a Muhammad Ali. So I just think from a visual point of view, from a cerebral point of view, Hugh Jackman's height is still a freaking problem. It's still a problem, I'm sorry. Because this is the Wolverine I wanna see. This is the Wolverine I wanna see. I, and watching this film, I like, bro, I wish I saw this I saw this Wolverine. And Hugh Jackman again, amazing. He he was great in this film. Acting wise, he was great. But this is what people have to understand. If Pete Al Pacino or Pete De Niro came in to audition for Superman, oh, that'd, that'd be amazing. You know, Superman. Casting is a two flex. Casting is about your acting ability and if you fit the role visually. So when people say, that was a great audition. You're not right for the role. That's not because you were bad at acting in the audition. It's because you're too tall, you're too short, your face isn't right, your aura isn't right. So it has nothing to do with your ability. It's just with what you were given physically. So a De Niro or a Pete Pacino could never walk as Superman. Hugh Jackman, you're just not Wolverine. This is Wolverine. And you see, we are so unlucky because... If we were in a, in a different world, this is Wolverine. Guys, if you can, maybe you can just watch clips on YouTube. Go type in Jack Nicholson Wolf. Jack, I think it came out in the, I think it was in the early 90s. It was him and Michelle Pfeiffer. I think it was in the 90s, I believe. I think it was 94. It might have been 94. Go watch Jack Nicholson Wolf. That's Wolverine. That is Wolverine. Because of his face, what he looks like, the aura gets around him and his build, his physical build, that is Wolverine because Wolverine is short and stocky. People say he's not, he's not like five foot two, five foot three. He, Wolverine can't be above five seven. He can't be five seven max. Five eight is pushing him five because I think Jack Nicholson might be five seven five five eight. That is see that is peak where we're looking. So again, he did well, but and. It's taken nothing away from, from Hugh Jackman. He was amazing in this, acting-wise. He simply isn't Wolverine, and I just want a Wolverine. That's, I, just, I just want a real Wolverine, but I want to just get back to the film itself. So, okay, let me give you, this is another big issue with the film. Another, and I think everyone will agree with this. Everyone is going to agree with this. And I think even if you love the film, this is something that everyone will, will ag agree with. 
there's there's still a massive villain problem. The villain was garbage. The villain was trash. The acting was good. So this take nothing away from the actress. She was good. She did she did her, her job. She was given lines. She delivered those lines very well. So this is nothing to do with the actress. She did her job. So this is about the writing and the story. The character, what the character is, their motivation, how they are presented as a threat, garbage. Garbage. And I think that is, was one of the biggest issues with the film because why do we love Winter Soldier so much? Because the Winter Soldier is such a good villain. In terms of how he's presented, his antithesis to the protagonist, his relationship to the protagonist, and just how he is drawn into the story and how he weaves into this, the story. That's what makes him a great villain. Joker, either in Batman or Dark Knight, freaking Thanos. So, but, and for me, especially in films like this, a strong villain is pivotal. In, because comic book movies, they're like, Greek myths, they're like ancient stories, and it's about the hero and the villain. So it's like Star Wars. Star Wars would not be Star Wars if Darth Vader was a brick. <laughs> if it was a brick, Lord of the Rings would not be Lord of the Rings if Sauron or Saruman was a, a brick. The Matrix wouldn't be the Matrix if Smith was a brick. You have Back to the Future wouldn't be Back to the Future if Biff was a brick. You have to have a greater villain. And because the villain was so trash, and I think, and the issue with this is that Going back to the film is, again, this film is for the fans. This is a film to just make the fans happy. They, they're not trying to make a film. And that is why they didn't really put much effort in trying to make the villain interesting, weave the villain into the, the story as a threat. This is just about, okay, what have the fans always wanted? Let's give them all of that. So, and look, and this is this is why okay, this is non-spoiler. I'll probably do a spoiler review afterwards. The, there are this is the, the triumph of this film are, are the cameos and the soft surprises. That's when you walk away from this film, that, that is the biggest thing about this film. Like if I say the, the biggest strength of this, no, okay, cool. The biggest strength of this film, I'll give it two things. Very good action. The act, so shout out to, I think it's Sean Levy who did Real Steel with Hugh Jackman. The action scenes are very, very well done. In terms of choreography, um, just the action, how well this is executed, very well done. So the action is really good. You can see everything that that's happening. There's no shaky cam. It's very well organized, very well structured. The action scenes are very, very well done. So yeah, very well done. Um, and the cameos. There's one cameo here where I was like, what? <laughs> what? What? Excuse me? So again, and please, 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 stay off the internet. Stay off the internet. If you don't want this to be ruined for you, I beg you, stay off the internet. Stay off the internet because you don't want this to be ruined for you. Because one was ruined for me. I was like, ah, damn it. But in my opinion, the best cameo wasn't really for you. So because when I saw that, I was like, they really got, you know. And again, I don't want to ruin it for you, but it's something. If you can go in there without having it ruined for you, it's an experience. Because for me, if, if you're on the internet now, you're already screwed. But if you're in the fortunate position where it's not ruined for, for you, oh, it will be great. So... Okay, yeah. So look, here's, here's a, so you say to myself that where are we at with the MCU now? Because look, this film is interesting. In a sense. As I said again, I didn't like the, the film. And all because I didn't like the film doesn't mean that I would not recommend it to you guys. I think a lot of people will love this movie. This film is gonna make cr this film is gonna make crazy money. It won't make as much as Inside Out 2. A film about like a girl's emotions, boom. But I can see people loving the film. I think a lot of people are gonna love the comedy. They're gonna love the violence, uh, how they're gonna love how profane it is, and they're gonna love the cameos. So this is gonna be a crowd pleaser. This is gonna be like No Way Home. No Way Home was a garbage film. That film was trash, but it was an event that everyone felt they needed to see. This is gonna be something that everyone will see. Most people will love this film. Because I think that 
regular crowds will be like, oh, this is just fun. This is fun. It's laid back. It's not taking itself too, too, too seriously. And it's, and it's a theme park ride. But what is interesting now is where does the MCU go from here? So now Kevin Feige has now revealed that um, Blade is going to be R-rated. You're probably going to see like a Punisher coming as well as R-rated. So the fact that this exists, this is going to do crazy amounts of money. This is going to take the MCU into a whole different plateau because now what you will see is, okay, there'll still be those crowd pleasers. We will now have more R-rated content, which I'm sort of expands this because I think people's idea, which, 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 is, which is what um, Deadpool disproved and the Joker disproved is you can make money with an NC-17 film. You could make money with an R-rated film because you may not get those younger um, audience who are still going to sneak. <laughs> guys, younger guys are, are sneaking into R-rated films. But fine, even if you, you feel you're not going to get like younger families, there's a thing called multiple viewings and multiple watches. Bro, Titanic made all that money not because of kids or whatever. They made that money because six women watched that film 3,000 times. So if your R-rated film is good enough, there are groups of people that will watch that film 20 times, 30 times. And that's how you'll, you'll make a bill because people will watch that film 20, 30, 40 times <laughs> if, it's, if it's good. So you don't need that PG-13 to appeal to all. So I do feel that especially with this, this film is going to make huge money. And when this film is fully successful, you're going to get more R-rated films, 100%. You're going to make... So it's going to be interesting to see where the MC goes from here. And... Okay, no, that's... No, it's... no, 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 no. Because I'm going to say it's a spoiler. Like, so I'll save that for the spoiler review because that is a potential spoiler. So I'll save that for the spoiler review. But look, um... Watch it. Like, for me, I say, look, I... <laughs> again, I will reiterate what I said again. If you're a comic book fan, you will love this film. You will absolutely love this film in terms of the action, the Easter eggs, the cameos, and just the, the and just how much it pays homage to comic books. You will love this. If you're a film fan and appreciates films. I'm not that big in so comic books, or you're not a big comic book reader, this film is trash. This film is trash. If, key thing, if you're a film fan who appreciates film and you don't care for comic book Easter eggs, you don't care for cameos, and you're not really that into comic books, this film is garbage. So it depends on which camp you're in. Are you a film fan who's not really into comic books? Are you a big comic book fan who you're a casual film guy? Depending on which camp you're in will either be this film is freaking amazing wow, what a time, or film is garbage. I'm in the other camp of, for me, film is garbage. Apart from a few bits, oh, cool, it's ultimately garbage. But for those hardcore comic book fans, oh, my gosh. Oh, oh my Lord. Oh, my Lord. So, and we'll, we will talk about this on, so remember, Sunday, live spoiler hangouts review. We'll talk about this on Sunday, and I'll be interested to see what you guys think about this um, movie.